In 2006, we formed Family First New Zealand. We wanted to be a voice in the public domain to champion strong and stable families, to promote the institution of marriage, and to protect life from conception through to natural death. We believe strong marriages and connected families lead to a strong nation. But the reverse is true also. Family breakdown leads to much social cost, both to individuals and to society. Family First quickly became a household name, advocating for families and speaking common sense and values on a broad range of issues in New Zealand. Family First has been fighting the law since its 2007 inception. It's now armed with a legal opinion from public lawyer May Chen, saying good parents are being criminalised. He tono nga te rōpū Family First, ki a whakapiki hi ano te pakeke o te inu waipiro ki te rua te kauma. This is a question I want to ask Louisa is once you change the definition once, what stops you changing it again? What about the calls from uh, Family First which have come out this morning from Bob McCroskery about the right to silence law? Because there are parts of it, I mean we're talking sex violence drugs, aren't Ex we? Explicit but though, and I'd like to read extracts from the book to you, but we can't on it. Family First have um, released a survey, it's called Young People and Alcohol, and of course the, the, the alcohol reform bill is, is something that's going to be kicking over this mm. year. We're just saying, hey look, it's just a physical act, as long as you wear the condom, you can basically get away with anything. It's almost four years since babies Chris and crew Kahui were killed. Now Family First says an anonymous donor has offered $25,000 to see justice served. Gay adoption? Uh, no, because I think a child right, Raymond deserves Miller. a mum and a dad. Explicit graphic violence. Not exactly family viewing, right? Well, definitely not, says Family First. Once you redefine something, where do you stop? I mean, what's wrong with three consenting adults who want to get married, or four. Family First, who oppose Sue Bradford's move, have brought out a US academic who's written extensively in favour of the limited and moderate use of corporal punishment. Two, three, four, Others were outraged. One, two, three, a lobby group gathered 300,000 signatures, which forced the citizens' referendum. Most people would raise their eyebrows and say, well, surely you know what your biological sex is. Joining me now is Dr Miriam Grossman, a psychiatrist from the States who writes about the harm of sex education. She's been brought out here by Family First. Family First's making no apologies for a report that claims too many New Zealand children are spending too long in daycare. The Family First organisation says there have been 10 suspicious child deaths in the past 17 months. That's these seven children and three other newborns. It talks about not only people who might die within 12 months, and there's plenty of examples of people who have well outlived uh, the diagnosis that they've been given. Because your children apparently are risking their health by spending too much time glued to TVs and devices. Well, that's the claim in a new report by a Family Values Lobby Group. And what did you make of the decision to repeal Roe v Wade? Oh, fantastic decision. Yeah. Anybody who thinks that the unborn child has a right to life and that their bodily autonomy should be recognised. I appreciate so much Family First and what you're doing it will make a difference in the future. But if Bob is saying that those those gay couples aren't fit to raise Nobody children... Nobody is saying is that. Saying We're that saying that what is the priority? And what is the best case example? And what is the purpose of adoption? Do you want to say to a seven-year-old girl, we don't think you need a mummy? Bob, if you want to worry want to. about the world imploding, worry about nuclear weapons and climate change, <laughs> not gay couples. <laughs> Mummy. Bob, if you want to worry want to. about the world imploding, worry about nuclear weapons and climate change, <laughs> not gay couples. <laughs> I just want to ask it's you not a very, about gay very couples because it's also Bob. heterosexual de facto couples that can't adopt as well. Very, it's very not quick a gay question. issue, you just no, no, very quick question. One of the major left wing blog sites in New Zealand, the spin off, who would disagree with most of our views, wrote this about us. They participate in politics in a way other advocacy groups can only dream of. The group also boasts a genuinely nationwide presence, a machine that's been so influential in shaping and driving conservative politics in New Zealand. The last couple of years have been massive, including the referendum on euthanasia and the referendum on cannabis, which Family First primarily focused on. 
And joining me now is Bob McCroskey, National Director of Family First, and Chloe Schwarber, Green MP and spokesperson for the party on drug law reform. Welcome to you both. They saw every single harm associated no, to no, drugs sorry. in terms of overdose. You've been reading the Cato in terms report. Of problematic yeah, the use, Cato report reduce. is a libertarian organisation with radical drug policies. Well, the vote on cannabis has gone right down to the wire. No campaigners celebrating a win. It's good news for young people that they're not going to be enlisted in a social experiment. We don't expect young people to applaud us for it, but we know that we've done the right thing by then. I take a massively positive message. You saw even the really perversely named Say No to Dope campaign. I'm sorry guys, cannabis still exists. Well done. Uh... Plus, there was the introduction of one of the world's most extreme abortion laws. The birth certificates legislation, which ignores biology in favour of gender ideology and allows you to change the sex on your birth certificate and the conversion therapy bill, which has criminalised aspects of family life, free will and expressions of faith. Performing gay conversion therapy could soon be a jailable offence. Lobby group Family First says the ban is an attack on parents' rights, calling the law fundamentally flawed and unfair. The government wants to legislate against the discussion and practice of alternatives. And after a battle that lasted almost a decade and four court cases, going all the way to the Supreme Court, the government has finally succeeded in deregistering Family First as a charity because they believe that our purpose of promoting the traditional family unit cannot be shown to be in the public benefit. In other words, they don't like our views on family and marriage. The Supreme Court has ruled that Family First does not qualify for charitable status. It's 10 years, it's cost us about three quarters of a million dollars um, because we've been fighting this on the basis that the danger is that when the court determines what can be mm. and can't be said by charities, we're in a dangerous place. Family First has never backed away from the fact that we back a Judeo-Christian value mm. and that is that marriage has always been defined as one man, one woman. There mm. are other forms of relationships, use another name. The good news is, we're still here, and we're not going away. 2023 and beyond is going to be just as significant and busy. Family First is empowering parents to push back against the radical and extreme gender ideology and sexuality education, and the divisive critical race theory being indoctrinated in schools. Continued attempts to liberalise our drug laws, hate speech laws and the need to protect religious freedom, specifically Christian beliefs, which are the obvious target. Our call for an inquiry into the public health harms of pornography and age verification on porn websites. Ongoing advocacy work and research in the areas of marriage and families. And continued monitoring of the abortion, euthanasia and conversion therapy laws. It's also an important election year we'll be publishing our very popular Value Your Vote guide for the general election. It allows you to see how each current MP has voted on important social issues. Voting according to our values is the greatest freedom and privilege we have. We should value it and use it. Plus our significant presence on social media with a number of shows which are becoming very popular. Family Matters, hosted by a number of presenters and commenting on a range of issues including hate speech laws, crime and violence in our community, sexuality education and gender ideology, critical race theory, media bias on key social issues and puberty blockers and gender confusion in our young people. Then there's our regular video blog from Bob McCoskery called McBlog with an almost daily dose of commentary around social and family issues. And that video analysis that went viral. We are now happy to take questions. And our new and very popular weekly political analysis show, Straight Talk, with a panel of guests who are unashamedly and unapologetically social conservatives. Our ability to research, advocate for and keep families informed as to the issues affecting them and ultimately be a family watchdog is only possible because of your investment. We don't receive a cent of government funding and we wouldn't even take it if it were offered. Ultimately though, we want to be a voice for you, for the issues that you care about. 
We trust that you'll appreciate our common sense, researched and credible approach to the many family and political issues in the media and public domain this year. Join the grassroots movement to promote marriages, life, family and freedom. We will continue to be principled and bold in our promotion of the socially conservative values and laws which you also strongly believe in and which have benefited our society for hundreds of years. Stand with us as we stand for families.